Welcome to our exploration of famous historical figures and their favourite drinks. In this video, we'll take a journey through time and uncover the drinks that accompanied some of the most iconic personalities in history. From Winston Churchill's refined taste for Paul Roger Champagne, to Picasso's artistic inspiration with absinthe, and Thomas Jefferson's scholarly interest in wine. We'll delve into the unique relationships these figures had with their chosen beverages. Hemingway's love affair with daiquiris and Boris Yeltsin's fondness for vodka will also be revealed. However, it's important to note that while we celebrate the cultural significance of these drinks, it is by no means a way to romanticize the complicated relationship many have with alcohol. Nevertheless, let's raise our glasses as we explore the fascinating connections between these historical icons and their drink of choice. Sir Winston Churchill, the iconic British Prime Minister and wartime leader, had a well-documented affinity for Paul Roger Champagne, a prestigious brand synonymous with luxury and celebration. Churchill's love for the Champagne was more than just a personal preference. It became a symbol of his indomitable spirit and unwavering resolve during some of the darkest moments of the Second World War. Churchill's relationship with Paul Roger Champagne began in the 1920s, when he was introduced to the brand by his friend and fellow politician Odette Paul Roger. From that moment on, Churchill developed a deep admiration for the Champagne's fine quality and rich flavour, often describing it as his favourite drink and wine of kings. During the tumultuous years of World War II, Churchill's fondness for Paul Roger Champagne remained steadfast. He famously declared, in victory, deserve it. In defeat, need it. Illustrating his belief in the Champagne's ability to uplift spirits and provide solace during times of crisis. Indeed, Churchill's wartime leadership was often punctuated by moments of celebration, with bottles of Paul Roger Champagne being uncorked to toast victories, no matter how small, and to provide respite from the relentless pressures of the conflict. One of the most enduring anecdotes about Churchill and Paul Roger Champagne occurred after the liberation of Paris in 1944. In a letter to the Champagne House, Churchill expressed his gratitude for their role in the war effort, writing, I am proud to say that although in the past I used to drink it all the time, it is one of the most wholesome drinks known to man and will always remain so. Churchill's association with Paul Roger Champagne has since become legendary, with the Champagne House paying tribute to him by creating special cuvées in his honour. Today, Churchill's love for Paul Roger Champagne is celebrated as part of his larger-than-life legacy, symbolising his resilience, sophistication and unapologetic zest for life. Pablo Picasso, the iconic Spanish artist, known for his revolutionary contributions to the world of art, harboured a deep affection for a drink as enigmatic and complex as his own creations. Absinthe. This green-hued spirit, often referred to as the Green Fairy, held a mesmerising allure for Picasso, captivating his senses and fueling his imagination. Absinthe, infused with botanicals such as wormwood, fennel and anise, held a storied reputation in the bohemian circles of late 19th and early 20th century Europe. Picasso, ever drawn to the unconventional and the avant-garde, found himself enamoured with the mystique surrounding this infamous elixir. For Picasso, absinthe was more than just a drink. It was a ritual, a catalyst for creativity and a symbol of artistic rebellion. He believed that the ritualistic preparation of absinthe involving the slow drip of ice water over a sugar cube into the spirit held a transformative power, unlocking hidden depths of inspiration and unleashing a torrent of artistic expression. Picasso's love affair with absinthe was well documented, with the spirit often featuring prominently in his paintings, drawings and sculptures. The swirling green hues of absinthe found their way onto his canvases, becoming a recurring motif that symbolised the intoxicating allure of creativity and the blurred boundaries between reality and imagination. Despite the drink's controversial reputation and eventual ban in many countries, Picasso remained steadfast in his devotion to the spirit, viewing it as an essential companion on his artistic journey. Absinthe, 
with its intoxicating aroma and complex flavor profile, became inseparable from the mythos surrounding Picasso and his revolutionary approach to art. Thomas Jefferson, renowned as the main author of the Declaration of Independence and third president of the United States, possessed a notable passion for wine that was as rich and complex as the finest vintages he cherished. His love affair with wine transcended mere indulgence. It was an integral part of his lifestyle, reflecting his sophisticated palate and appreciation for the finer things in life. During his tenure as the American ambassador to France from 1785 to 1789, Jefferson embarked on a journey through the heart of European viticulture. Immersed in the vineyard-laden landscapes of France, Italy and beyond, he toured renowned wineries, absorbed the intricacies of winemaking and cultivated relationships with esteemed winemakers. Upon assuming the presidency and taking residence at the White House, Jefferson ensured that his love for wine was accommodated for. He maintained an extensive cellar stocked with a carefully curated selection of his favourite wines sourced from established European vineyards and emerging regions. Jefferson's fondness for wine was eloquently expressed in his famous proclamation, good wine is a daily necessity for me. These words encapsulated his belief in the transformative power of wine, not only as a source of physical refreshment, but as a channel for intellectual and social enrichment. He was amongst the earliest advocates for the cultivation of wine grapes in the United States, recognizing the vast potential of the country's terrain to produce great wines. In championing the cause of American viticulture, Jefferson laid the groundwork for the flourishing wine industry that would later emerge, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's wine legacy. Ernest Hemingway, the iconic American author, known for his literary prowess and adventurous spirit, had a legendary affinity for a particular cocktail, the daiquiri. But not just any daiquiri. Hemingway's taste veered towards a variant known as the Papa Doble, or Hemingway daiquiri. This signature cocktail, immortalized in Hemingway lore, was crafted to suit the writer's bold and distinct palate. Concocted at the El Floridita bar in Havana, Cuba, a frequent haunt of Hemingway's, the Papa Doble boasted a potent blend of white rum, lime juice, grapefruit juice, and maraschino liqueur. Notably, it was served without sugar, reflecting Hemingway's preference for a tart and robust flavor profile. Hemingway's love affair with the daiquiri went beyond mere enjoyment. It became an integral part of his persona and literary legacy. The drink's association with Havana's vibrant atmosphere and Hemingway's adventurous lifestyle added to its mystique, transforming it into a symbol of the writer's larger-than-life persona. The Papa Doble featured prominently in Hemingway's life and work, appearing in his writings and becoming a fixture in his social gatherings. Whether sipped leisurely at the bar or enjoyed aboard his beloved fishing boat, the Pilar, the daiquiri served as a steadfast companion to Hemingway's many adventures. Despite Hemingway's tumultuous relationship with alcohol and eventual struggles with alcoholism, his love for the daiquiri remained undiminished. The cocktail, with its refreshing citrus notes and potent kick, embodied the essence of Hemingway's ethos, bold, uncompromising and unapologetically adventurous. Today, the Hemingway daiquiri continues to be celebrated by cocktail enthusiasts and literary enthusiasts alike a lasting tribute to the enduring legacy of one of America's most iconic writers and his favorite beverage. With each sip of this timeless cocktail, one can't help but be transported to the sun-drenched shores of Cuba, where Hemingway's spirit lives on in every perfectly mixed glass. Boris Yeltsin, the first president of the Russian Federation, was widely known for his love of vodka, a fondness that often made headlines and became a prominent part of his public image. Yeltsin's relationship with vodka was emblematic of his boisterous personality and his reputation as a colorful and unpredictable leader. Yeltsin's fondness for vodka was well documented, with numerous anecdotes and stories highlighting his enjoyment of the spirit. He was often photographed raising a glass of vodka in toasts during official functions and social gatherings, and his jovial demeanor only added to his reputation as a spirited drinker. 
One notable incident occurred when Yeltsin was in America on a state visit. The president was discovered attempting to hail a taxi on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. in only his underwear. This widely reported event further solidified Yeltsin's reputation as a spirited and unpredictable leader. Despite his fondness for vodka, Yeltsin's relationship with alcohol was not without controversy. There were instances when his drinking habits attracted criticism, particularly during his presidency, when he was occasionally seen in public in a less than sober state. These incidents fueled speculation and debate about his fitness for office. Although, Yeltsin's supporters often dismiss such concerns as overblown. Yeltsin's love of vodka also reflected his roots in Russian culture and tradition. Vodka has long been an integral part of Russian social life with a rich history dating back centuries. For Yeltsin, vodka symbolized camaraderie, celebration, and the indomitable spirit of the Russian people. In the annals of Russian history, Boris Yeltsin's love of vodka remains a colorful and enduring aspect of his legacy. Whether raising a toast to friends or navigating the complexities of politics, Yeltsin's fondness for vodka was as much a part of him as his larger-than-life personality and his role in shaping the course of his country's history. As we wrap up our exploration of historical figures and their favorite drinks, let's raise a final toast to the rich tapestry of human history. From Winston Churchill's champagne to Hemingway's daiquiris, each drink offers a glimpse into the personalities of those who enjoyed them. Here's to the enduring allure of these beverages and the remarkable individuals who savoured them. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey. We'd love to hear from you. Comment below on what topics you'd like us to cover in our next video. Cheers.